I have another flashlight I want to share with you today. This is the Wubin X3 Owl, compact, lightweight, and very versatile. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Wubin for sending out the X3 Owl so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do, as always, is go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light, the physical and performance specifications, as well as its modes of operation. Then we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. All right, just before we focus in on the light itself, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So this is the box the light arrived in. Pretty simple box, really. Information on the back does open up in a unique fashion, but more importantly is what is inside. And inside here, we have the manual and warranty information. One other thing inside is this. This does look like a lanyard, and it is. It is a lanyard that you can use and attach to the light, but it's also a USB Type-C fast charge cable, so you have the double end at USB type C on either end so you have your cable with you as well as a lanyard one of the feature about this and I'll have to see if I can get it to do this here we go it has an adapter for Apple products so you can use this also with Apple products also a nice little feature to have with it and I'll put those aside now my light did come with this which is a charging station and uh, if you don't get this as an accessory then you will get a different looking charging station but this one is kind of unique unique in and of itself in that it has a built-in battery which will allow the flashlight to be recharged without being connected to another power source. So it's great for traveling or at least camping for a period of time. So it's not only a power bank, but it is also a lamp in and of itself. If you drop the light down inside here, like that, and then were to turn it on, then you would have, let's see, there we go, an area lamp for the table. So it does kind of work kind of cool in that respect. So this is an option, but it's a nice option to have, of course. All right, let's bring the light back in. We'll go very quickly through the key features for this light, and uh, then we'll get into its physical specifications. So to start with, right off of the top, this has both a white and red LEDs, and I'll show you how to access in those in a few minutes' time. Also something I think that led to the name OWL is the fact that it has a rotating head on it. So you can turn the light 180 degrees and now I have a more traditional forward facing set of LEDs, but you can turn it and hold it in any uh, of those degree angles. It's not clicks, it's just a constant movement and use it like this. Now, what are the benefits for this? Well, for one, you can hold it like a forward facing light or you can clip it on to something using the installed pocket clip on the back like a hat. So if you put this on the brim of a hat, you can add, actually direct the light wherever you want. One other thing, and this is another key feature, is the fact that it, these charging points on the bottom are also magnetic. So you can mount this on anything made of a ferrous metal and then you can actually, again, Put the light wherever it needs to be while you do the work for it. Now, another key feature of this is the fact that you can probably see this coil built inside the semi or translucent casing for this is a wireless charging application. So if you have a wireless charging pad for your phone, if you have a newer style phone, style phone that will accept that, you can also charge this flashlight on it. Now, in my case, I don't have one of those pads, but I do have power stations that are, will provide wireless charging for my cell phone. So they will also charge my flashlight. Also about charging, it has a rapid charge time of two hours. Now I didn't mention the battery, but it is a 1000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery and it is non-removable, which of course I know not everybody is in favor of. Having said that though, when I look at the back of the flashlight, there are tiny Torx screws mounted all the way around. I'm not gonna open this up to see if it's something I can replace, but it's good to know that at least it is accessible without destroying the light, meaning either you should be able to do so at some point in the future, or if you needed to, send it back to Wubin and they can repair your light for you. I mentioned the magnetic paste on it and the pocket clip. One more feature before we move on, and that is this light comes with an LED status display right here. Now it's not lit up, but I will show you that in a few moments time. And what that provides is not only the lumen level that you have it turned on to, but also the runtime that it has left on that lumen level. All right, moving on to the physical specifications for this light, all important weight 2.29 ounces or 65 grams, length 2.76 inches or 70 millimeters, 
width is 1.38 or 35 millimeters and height or thickness is 0.83 inches or 21 millimeters. It is IP65 waterproof rating and has an impact rating of one meter. All right, let's go through the performance specifications for the Movement X3 Owl. So to start with the white light, it has a turbo setting of 700 lumens. That'll only last for 30 seconds, though, before the heat protection technology drops it down to 200 lumens. Then it will last for another 1.5 hours. It has a high setting of 150 lumens, which will last for two hours. It has a medium setting of 50 lumens, lasting for six hours. And it has a low setting of one lumen, lasting for 50 hours. It does have have strobe and strobe will run at 700 lumens and it has an SOS which will run at 150 lumens. Now for the red LED it has a high setting which will start out at 80 lumens lasting for 30 seconds and then drop down to 30 lumens lasting for another two hours. On low for the red LED it has a one lumen setting lasting for 30 hours. All right let's go through the operation of the Wubin X3 hour and I'm going to start with the primary light which is the white light in this case. So the power button or the switch is right up here. And now this operates all the lumen settings as well as the white and red LED. It's a very simple operation. In fact, just a simple press will turn the light on and it has memory for whatever the last lumen setting is. In this case, it's the one lumen or the low. To run it through its lumen settings, you just have to press and hold and you can see it ran through. Now, if you want to access turbo, double tap, and that is bright, and my camera, of course, adjusts. Now, if you want to access the strobe, it's triple tap. And if you want to access SOS while it's in strobe, triple tap again. If I turn it off, and of course, and if I turn it back on again, it comes on to whatever the last lumen setting was, and again, it is low. Now, while I have the light turned on, let me see if I can turn it around and show you this. And hopefully it's focusing in. You can see it that it's showing on the display next to the on-off switch that it is on the one lumen setting and just how much time is left if you lift it on in the one lumen setting. So that's a, a rather nice feature. I also will be able to show you in the charging station. It'll t give me the amount of charge in the battery and how long it will take to finish off that charge as well. Now let's go to the red lights. I'll start by turning the light off. If I want to turn the red light on, it's just a simple long press. Now, this is a really key feature because I've had other lights and people have commented on this that you don't always want to go to white before you can get to red. If you're in your tent, you're trying to preserve your night vision, you want to be able to go directly to red without having to blind yourself. So to turn the red on directly is just press and hold and it will go on in the red. Now you can see the red showing down there. This is the red in the low mode. And now if I press it and hold it, it'll go to the high. Look how bright that is. The camera even has to adjust for that. And then if I turn it off and press it back on, it will go back to the white light. All right, two more features in the operating system that are worth sharing with you. One, this does have an electronic lockout. Now, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary because the battery is kind of flush, but I suppose it's possible if you're carrying this in your pocket or in your pack that you could unintentionally turn the light on. So if you want to use the electronic lockout, it's just three quick taps on the light while the light is off. One, two, three, four. And now the light will not function for me. If I want to unlock the light, it's again four taps. One, two, three, four. And you can see the light came in again in the last lumen setting, which in this case was low. Now, this does have another kind of unique feature. It's something that was turned on when I got the light. I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but it was great to know that I could turn it off if I want to. And that is you can have a blue light shining through the body of the flashlight while the light is on if you want to. I'm not sure what the point is. It's not like the breathing light, which will let you find it in the dark. This is a little different. So let me show you how you do that. So to start with, the light has to be turned on. Now I quick tap five times and you'll see a light come on in the body. One, two, three, four, five. Hopefully that's showing up. It does show up better in the dark, but you can see that there is a blue LED shining through the light. Now if you want to turn that off, it's again five taps while the light is turned on. One, two, three, four, five. The light goes off and now it's no longer present.
All right, one more thing I want to share with you before we get outside and do some demonstrations with the OWL is the optional accessory power bank charging station. So as I mentioned, you do need some type of a charging station to recharge your OWL. And the standard one is a small one that you would drop this in. This as an accessory gives you a few features which are worth considering. To start with, it has its own built-in lithium ion battery, 3000 milliamp hour, which means that theoretically you should be able to recharge your flashlight from zero to full three times. So in other words, if you were to recharge both of them before you went camping, you would have four full life cycles of the battery that you can use before you needed to recharge either of them. So the operation itself, of course, is very simple. It has its own means of being recharged, and that was right here where you can see a USB Type-C charging port, and beside it is a small button which is accessible from the outside. It's just a small blue LED, I'm not sure if that's showing up, and that just indicates that the, there is power still in the power bank itself. Now, to operate this, open the top up, drop your flashlight in, and that's all there is to it. And then I'll drop the, the top on. What I want to show you here is the display on the light it's showing. And what it's showing graphically is the battery being charged, of course, and the percentage of charge still in the battery. I think in this case it says 90%. All right, so it's still got most of its charge. So that's great. You know when it's going to be from zero all the way up to full charge. Now, the other thing is that this actually doubles as a lamp or a table lamp all by itself. In order to use it, just turn the light on. And you can see now I have it running at the one lumen setting because that was the last lumen setting I had used this light in but I can change it all the way up to turbo if I wanted to just by operating the switch as I did normally. So this is going to give a lot of light right on a table if you're looking for an area light maybe inside of your tent or if you're trying to do some food preparation in the evening at your table, then this is going to provide just a nice diffuse light for that purpose. All right, let's start the Wuben X3 off on medium, which is 50 lumens. And there's a bit of light all around my feet. Since it's all flood, it's not lighting up a whole great lot of area. Take it up to what would be high at 150 lumens. That's starting to light the backyard up, but let's try turbo. Now that is a lot of light, 700 lumens, lighting up my backyard with a lot of floodlight. Very impressive for a small light. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Wuben X3 Owl. Let's start with the things I really like about it. Well, to start with, compact, lightweight. I really like this for that reason. I like the fact that it has the rotating basil or the rotating head on this, which allows me to focus the light exactly where I want it. So if I want it using it down like this or up like this. It's great in that position. If I want to rotate it 180 degrees and use it like a more traditional flashlight, it works in that direction. And of course, I can turn the light into a, the exact angle I need to focus the light where I want it. The fact that I can use it on a metal base to hold the light on, uh, a nice feature as well. And that it gives me that much more vers versatility when I'm trying to focus the light and do some work at the same time. So those are some of the key features. Now, one of the things it has, of course, as I mentioned, is the wireless charging capability. Um, this is not a deal breaker for me. If it didn't have it, I'd still consider this light. Having it is another value added plus. And the same thing can be said for the display panel for the LED right here. It's nice to be able to see what lumen setting you're in. More importantly, it's nice to see exactly how much power you have left in your light. But if it wasn't there, I'd still consider looking at this light because, again, that's not a deal breaker not having it. It's just another value added to the lights. Now, there is a few things about this light. I guess one is a relative con, and the fact is you have no direct access to the lowest lumen setting, the one lumen setting. Now, why would you want that in the first place? Well, if you're in a darkened area like your tent and you're looking to turn on the lowest lumen setting so you don't blind yourself, often flashlights, if you long press the, the button, will allow you to access that setting. You don't have this on the this light. If you want to get to the one lumen setting, you're going to have to turn the white light on and then cycle through whatever it will come on and of course the last lumen setting used and then cycle it down to low. 
again, not a deal breaker because you do have direct access to the low lumen setting for the red LED, and that's going to serve the same purpose as the low white light setting would. If you're inside your tent, you don't want to blind yourself, ruin your night vision, long press the button, and on comes the low setting for red. So I think that's also a good feature. Now, there's a few things that I think could be improved. I'm not sure how you could do it with the light this design, but one is there is no way to directly charge this light with a USB Type-C cable unless you have a charging base for it, or you can use the wireless charging pad, of course. You do need to have this mounted in a charging station in order to charge it. Uh, is that a deal breaker? I'll leave that up to you, of course. It's not the ideal. It's nice to have a cable that you can charge directly to the flashlight with, but you cannot do that with the way this is designed. Now, I know this is a relative con for some people as well, and that's the fact that you cannot access the 1000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery in order to replace it. Uh, another relative con. Some people would prefer to be able to do that. For this style of light, I'm okay with it. I know that it's, it's, they're well made, the quality's there, they should last me a long, long time. If something does happen, it, uh, in, well, inside of the warranty period, of course, Wubin will take care of it. It happens after the warranty period has expired. Then I'm hoping that Wubin will still able to serve this light, assuming that, of course, all it needs is a battery replacement. Okay, those are the key things that I wanted to comment on. What I'm more interested in is hearing your thoughts on this light. What do you think of it? Is it something you'd be interested in taking another look at? If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section. I will, of course, put all the specifications as well as the links for this light in the video description. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.